What's going on, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Five on Five. I'm your host, Howard Bender of Fantasy Alarm TV. With me here today, <laughs> today's contestant, the giggling, Jen Piacenti. <laughs> Why is she giggling? Well, rumor has it we just found out that the cure for the coronavirus is bananas. And Jen is, uh, you know, a, a little upset that by is that. Not, that, I would be, that would totally be punking me if that were true. Would that I turn mean, you around on imagine? bananas? Would you be okay with yes, that? Yes, it would. It would turn me around on bananas. If bananas were the cure for coronavirus, I would provide bananas for everyone. Oh. I'd go bananas for bananas. Bananas for bananas. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not the case, really. But oh. listen, you know, it's been a little bit. Jen's been under the weather, not with the corona, but she's just been a little bit no. under the weather last yeah. week. So we missed y'all last week. So we have to take I advantage you of guys. it. I missed you guys. How are you feeling? Like, How are I'm you feeling holding okay, up? like desperate i need to connect with people i you know i i'm i'm a social person and just trying to take it easy was really hard for me and i miss you guys and i miss baseball I'm gonna, you know i'm uh, sports i'm fine i'm fine guys i'm fine no, i'm good no i'm good <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to be here and i can't wait so let's play all right you got your composure play. you ready to go let's play yeah. here are the yeah, rules play. Right. Five topics. You have okay. for each topic five minutes. You can give your own five minute diatribe all you want, um, or you can uh, you can give me your thoughts on it, and maybe I'll uh, I'll throw down a an a, a you know maybe another question or two on top of it to uh, to get us to five minutes. Once five minutes is up, that's it. No more. You get a little buzzer. It could sound like this. Might sound like this. But then again, who knows? We'll figure it out. Producing today's show is Matt Sells, and he has been super creative with the buzzers. So <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Jen, you got the rules? You all set? You ready to go? I'm, I'm ready. Let's do it. I got my stopwatch. Here we go. Question number one. The clock will start when I finish uh, the question. Number one, favorite MLB players of yours benefiting from the delayed start this season? Oh, there's so many. All right, okay, so number one we have to say is Mike Clevenger, right? That's an obvious one. He's an ace. He's someone that we didn't think we were going to have for opening day. High strikeout per nine pitcher, goes deep into games. Can't miss on that one. James Paxton is another one I love. Again, strikeout pitcher. I know he's had a lot of health issues in the past, but hey, maybe this is his health issue for the year, and you're going to get basically a full season out of James Paxton. That's a great one. Um, here's an interesting one, and yes, I'm going to be a bit of a homer here but I am intrigued by Kyle Tucker reason being we now know in the first 30 days they're going to extend rosters to be 29 instead of 26 yes it's 26 this year so 25 if you guys didn't know that means that Kyle Tucker doesn't necessarily have to be Josh Reddick out to be their opening day and even if he's still kind of slow he's going to get a chance to play because he could fill in for Let's say Jordan Alvarez for DH one day. They can move him around because they're probably going to be playing doubleheaders in more games. Second homer pick, Lance McCullers Jr. Okay, this guy is just coming off Tommy John surgery, and he's been throwing bullpen since October. But again, the the numbers are there: nine strikeouts per nine. For me, he's a perfect substitute for those of you that lost Noah Syndergaard. We were predicting about 120, 130 innings from Lance McCullers Jr. He's probably going to be able to do that. No problem. He has post-season um, experience. He's got a wicked curveball, and it's going to be a lot of fun to see him be awesome. Um, who else? Uh, Jesus Lazardo, great one. We were worried about how many innings he was going to get, his innings limit. We know the A's are going to be a contending team. We get to see him be like their ace lefty maybe. Who knows? He could really come up. I'm also a little interested in Michael Kopech. Are they going to bring him up? Is he going to get some time? He's got a lot of talent, and he hasn't had the time at the major league level, but he might get it now because we're going to need extra pitchers because we're going to need to protect those arms. So um, how am I doing on time? Am I oh, you're doing too great much? on time right it. now. Yeah, so, listen, I can throw you some, are... some questions about some of these guys yeah, too. Let's do let, it. Let me ask you, in a 12-team okay. mixed league, how high would yeah. you take Jesus Lazardo? He and Frankie Montas, uh, those two starters from the A's, they've been – Rising up the ranks in the ADP. I'm watching that at the mock yeah. draft army. Is it going to be, is the price going to be too high though at some point? 
it's possible it could be too high, but we need to start considering him top 20 easily. Because again, we're out, we're out, um, Syndergaard, we're out sale, right? We're out two aces already. We know for sure. You don't have, um, Severino. There's just not a lot of great, great aces out there. Jesus Lazardo has that capability. He's really, really good. You're going to get your strikeouts per nine and forget the innings limit. It's not an issue anymore. Maybe they'll start him kind of slow, but ultimately you're probably going to get a full 120 innings. So are you more on the weight on pitching now in your drafts? Because 100%, 100% weight on pitching because we don't know what's going to happen until we get a schedule. I'm not wasting my money on pitching. I think I can just cobble it together at the end because I'm literally someone like Andrew Heaney could end up being as valuable as someone like Noah Syndergaard was, depending on how this all comes out. No doubt about it. All right. A player that isn't is still dropping in the ADP, uh, regardless of injury, is Giancarlo Stanton. Is there yeah. a reason to, to let him fall or should you be grabbing him in that fifth, sixth I'm round? I'm grabbing him. I'm taking him. Listen, you don't know. he. I know he's injured all the time, but he has had his injury. And let's let's say he shows up with the Roy Hobbs Wonder Boy bat. That can happen for Giancarlo Stanton. He can be that guy. It's possible. It's worth taking him in the fifth, sixth round. That's a lot of power. Sure, if you're not risk tolerant, don't do it. But we're talking about a very high upside play. We don't know he's going to be injured to start the season. He had a calf strain. He should be fine. It's a high upside play. If you want to risk it, I'd go for it. Thoughts on a guy coming back from Tommy John like Michael Fulmer, who was absolutely dominant before the surgery, and now here we are, plenty of time afterwards. He's supposed to be a second-half guy. He could be full season. Brendan McKay, Michael Fulmer, come on. These guys are all in the conversation now. It's super exciting. I mean, I wish I could go back and redo my draft I did on March 14th, but you know what? It's okay. I'll roll with it. I'll put it together. The fun thing about this season is we get to switch strategies. Like every week it changes, right? We're going to be constantly reading and learning and retooling our strategies. This can be like no other season before, besides the fact that we're going to have to think about what's happening to our minor leaguers. Are they getting the workouts they need? Where are they going to be next year? Are they going to come up? Are they going to stay down? There's so many things to figure out with the expanded roster. <laughs> All right, there you go. Moving on to topic number two. Yeah, see, right? All of a sudden, you get up to a little bit of a roll. I'm like, huh. Right? Breathe. All right. Breathe. Here we go. All right. Here you go. We'll go a little easier here right now. Okay. Are you ready? Throw me a softball. All right, here's a little softball. Favorite shows to binge watch during this quarantine? Oh, okay. So I'm a super nerdy person, and I... I don't really binge watch. It's not really something I do. But the one show that I have now, <laughs> I have now watched all the seasons of um, is Columbo. I've watched them all. The original Columbo? The original, not the one from like, uh, from like the 70s. Sitting here, I, yeah, that, 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 uh, Oh, one more thing, one more thing. Yeah, that's what I watched. That's what I binge watched. I, I um, need to know why. I don't know why. I like mysteries. I always like mysteries. I think Peter Falk is incredibly entertaining. Have you seen the movie The In-Laws? He's so hysterical in that, right? And The Princess Bride, come on, classic. So I don't know why, because I'm weird. And they're like the right length. They're like an hour and 20, so it's not like a long movie, but it's a little longer than, I I don't know. And I have watched uh, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel on Amazon because, you know, theater. Okay. Uh, all right. So Colombo versus Mrs. Maisel. Which one? Yeah. So can you suggest? Uh, well, they're so different. You can't really compare them. It just depends on your mood. Mrs. Maisel, like, I love her sidekick. How did you get that? Like, seriously? Because you sit I there know. and look through everything and you're yeah. binge watching. You're looking at, there's Ozark. There's all this stuff on Netflix. It's like right there in front of you. And yeah. you end up on Colombo, like a 70s yeah. TV show. Yeah, I'm so not cool, y'all. In case you ever thought I was, I just burst. I, I am not cool. And I need suggestions. I understand Shit's Creek is supposed to be great. I love Modern Family, but I've already seen them all, so I couldn't binge watch that. I mean, help me. Help me help you. Help me help you. So I, I can give you better content because I'm telling you Columbo, and that's that's not it. That's not ratings getter. It's not a ratings getter, but I'm telling you, I'm like crazy intrigued by this because Columbo was a great show. It really was. I know, was a it's show. so good. I can't fault you for it. that. So 
but watch the old ones, guys, because the newer ones are not quite as good. So got to go back towards like season two, season three. And uh, great guest stars, Patrick Cassidy. Johnny Cash is on one. Johnny Cash plays a country star that murders somebody, obviously. I need a Columbo impression right now. Um, okay, let's see if I can do one. Um, we'll see you. My wife, she... Did you... Wait, 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 one more thing, one more thing. Uh, one more thing. Well, I'm not good at I'm not good at Columbo impressions. Can I work on it and get back to you? Because you can definitely I, work on it. That definitely my Elizabeth work. Holmes is far better. That's give, my best impression. Give me your thoughts on Mrs. Maisel. <laughs> Because that's actually that's a show that I uh, I binge watched uh, before the quarantine. Actually, it's freaking hilarious. I love every single actor in it. They're all incredibly on point. Um, you know, with Shalhoub, Tony Shalhoub is just he's just gotten better and better. I used to love that show, Monk too. See, and Quantum Leap. These are my these are my movie choices, people. I mean, my TV choices. I don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not a question of judging. It's just, I mean, it's real throwback stuff. And I mean, yeah. that's, that's like hardcore throwback stuff. That's throwback stuff to before yeah. you were a kid. That's like Rick yeah, Piacenti is. is picking your yeah. TV shows. It is. And I have kind of old taste in music too. So if that ever comes up, I'll just put it on the table now. All right. So out of all the, the shows that people are talking about binge watching, yeah. Ozark, Schitt's Creek, um, Hunter's. Uh, any of these? None of these are. are Haven't seen your any of them. Haven't seen the Tiger King. I am willing to commit. If someone wants to tell me, if you guys can take a vote and tell me the one show I want to start watch, I need to start watching. I will start watching it this week. I will commit, and I will let you guys know what I think. But if it sucks, I'm not going to keep watching it. It's got to be at least as good time? as time. What are you I doing with know. your time? Are you reading? I, I would, yes. <laughs> Ugh. Guys, I need a lot of self-help books. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Tony Robbins. You feeling good about that? I'm awakening the giant within. I'm oh. living in the now. <laughs> How am I supposed to get through life without baseball? I need help. You need to find some other coping mechanism there. Absolutely. No, and I haven't had a drink since the quarantine. Oh, well, Mazel Tov on that. Maybe if you drank, you'd be more interested in, like, Ozark, Tiger King. <laughs> or maybe I'd just be more interesting, period. Yeah. Oh, that. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, look at that. Out of time on that one. I'm blown away. I'm blown away. I love the Columbo call, though. That that could be. That's the underrated call. That is the sleeper binge watch of the century right now. Do it, no y'all. It's that. free on Amazon Prime. Wow. Okay. All right. We're going to move on to a little fantasy football here. The quarterback you will likely be targeting in most drafts this season. Go. Uh, can I only pick one? Oh, you can I'd pick like... several. You just go through. You got oh, five great. minutes to fill. So talk so to me. So perfect. I know. So Baker you're Mayfield. Right? Feeling. Baker? <laughs> Don't get me started on Baker Mayfield because I need way more than five minutes. There will be a Baker Mayfield episode. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking one of the people I'm going to target is actually going to be Matt Stafford. This is why. I love Matt Ryan. And I was looking at Matt Ryan and Matt Stafford. And actually, I think they're going to end up fairly similar. And I think I can get Matt Stafford a lot later. Maybe not a lot later, but later. And I think I might try to do that. The other person I'm interested in is um, Josh Allen. Because I think he might just be right at that point. So everyone's going to be on Kyler Murray. Like, I get it. I think Kyler Murray is a really good choice this year. But I think he's still going to be too rich for my blood. Reason being, we're all looking at NFL right now. We have nothing else to do. And by the time the hype train gets around, he's going to be so far up the board. People are going to be thinking Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, and Kyler Murray are all the same person. And they're all going too early for me. And I still am not going to stray and take my quarterback in the first, you know, 100 picks. So I think maybe Josh Allen might sneak in right there. And though I don't particularly like Stefan Diggs's fantasy value now that he's in Buffalo, I do like that it may have helped Josh Allen a bit. And if I have to put between Josh Allen and Kyler Murray, 
I think Josh Allen has the higher floor. Yes, Kyler Murray has a much higher ceiling, but if I can get Josh Allen a couple rounds later, I'd rather take my pick there. So is the is the mobility of a quarterback a, a major factor for you this year? I think it yeah, I think after last year it just kind of hammered home like let's give them a little bit. Let's get a higher floor. Let's let's he's young. He's not going to get hurt from rushing in a few more touchdowns. You know, it's not like it's Matt Ryan rushing in a lot of touchdowns. That might concern me a little more. So, and, and please, when he's rushing him, he's rushing him in for two yards sometimes half the time. So, <laughs> tell are Matty guys. Oh, actually, I love Matt Ryan, and I still might get Matt Ryan if he's cheap enough. I would rather have him than Matt Stafford. But if, if I feel like it's going to depend on the way the draft is going. But I feel like they're kind of here, and if I can get – Matt Stafford here, I might load up on running backs and wide receivers. Okay. So yeah, running backs, wide receivers, all nice and early. Josh Allen, probably going in like those mid rounds. I feel like, you know, I just didn't draft somewhere in like the eighth or ninth round. I thought I saw him go. I think Um, that's okay. Okay. All right. And then Stafford would be your backup. There too. And Stafford would be my backup. But, you know, I don't like Deshaun Watson as much this year without DeAndre Hopkins. Okay, you know, and that's a bummer. He's so talented. But again, you could get a few points with legs there. Um, I'm not touching Baker Mayfield, and that's because he's Baker Mayfield. Which is understandable. But I get it. I get it. I do but- think they've done a lot to help him. And if he can't succeed with what they've done, getting him Austin Hooper, some of the changes they've made, the way Stefanski will, t- if, they, if he can't succeed with that, they've given him the tools this year. I believe they've built for him a team that he should be able to succeed with. So if he still can't, like, oh, wait till the end of the year and I get to write my love letter. Ooh, spicy. All right. Well, okay. So I like it. So Josh Allen, Stafford as the backup. Let's say you're playing in a super flex league. Um, yeah. Okay. So now you, you're going to need to dig real deep into that third. I mean, it's not third tier. It's like third pocket of, you know, where people are taking quarterbacks. Which really super late round guys, like real below out of the top fifteen, are you looking at for your uh, for your possible super flex third QB? Yeah, I would go back to um, I would well, I would take a chance on Joe Burrow. Okay. Because why not? And I would go back to Ryan Tannehill. He's going to be post number fifteen, and he was solid. I mean, he doesn't do anything truly spectacular, but hey. He, he carried a lot of us through the playoffs, so I would take a chance on Ryan Tannehill again. Okay. Anybody else deeper than that? Even deeper? What, like? Well, I mean, I don't know. They're, listen, you've got, you're going to have how many teams this year in fantasy football? 12? Jimmy Garoppolo? 15. No, I'm not taking Jimmy you're not taking. You're not interested in Jimmy Grapes at all? No. I'm, I'm, I'm interested if you want to call me Jimmy. Just, you know, just tweet me. I got some digits for you, but not on my fantasy team. I have a different kind of fantasy about you, so we can talk about that later. Um, yeah, not not Jimmy. No Jimmy Grapes. All right. well, <laughs> and we're done anyway, so there you go. Um, all right, next topic. You'll love this one. Are you ready? Here you go, Jen. Okay. okay. Top three favorite musicals of all time. <gasps> Actually, you know what? I'm going to make you top five because I know you know musicals. <sighs> Top five musicals of all time. How am I supposed to choose? Well, you know, all listen, right. that's it. Okay, okay. You're, all right, all right. Bring it. Bring the heat, lady. Lame is a Rob because <sighs> Lame is a Rob. And if you listen to it and the music stays in your soul like that, that's a great musical. Um, Singing in the Rain because it was one of the first musicals I saw on you know, film and I loved it and it made me laugh and it made me happy. And it made me want to do it. Um, Into the Woods. Not the stupid movie version. But Into the Woods is great. It's so brilliant. It's so dark and awesome. Um, West Side Story. And 100% the movie, not the stage version. So there are definitely... I also have opinions about this. Which... Musicals are better on stage and which musicals are better in the movies. And they're not the same. Do tell. I, you've got right. time here. Come on. West Side Story, so much better in the movie. 
every stage production I've ever seen just falls flat because you have to have that Jerome Robbins choreography. It was shot perfectly. It was cast perfectly, even though it was dubbed, I know, but it's just perfect. Um, Grease, so much better as a movie, even though it's absolutely absurd that John Travolta is a teenager. I mean, have you watched that like as an adult? And you look back, you're like, really? Really? We're supposed to live you guys are teenagers? You tell me you don't yeah. look at like the guys in the T-Birds that they didn't get left back a couple of times? <laughs> Come on. They obviously, yeah, like 74 times. <laughs> um, what else is better? Oh, Carousel is a terrible movie. So if you see the movie of Carousel, you're going to think it's a bad show. But if you see a good stage production, it's really beautiful. And the same for Brigadoon, which is the worst movie. And really, really great on stage. Really magical. Oklahoma as well. Oklahoma is a mu uh, musical that, because people have seen the movie, they like to make fun of it. When you see the stage play, you see that there's a lot more to it. It's actually really deep and awesome. Um, so my last musical, gosh, this is hard. Um, there's so many. <laughs> I guess I would say it's My Fair Lady, my but fair mostly lady. because I want to be Eliza Doolittle does the oh, rain life. in Spain stay mainly on the plane? The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plane. <laughs> All right, yes. so top five then. Les Mis, Singing mm. in the Rain, Into the Woods, West Side Story, and... Um, and My Fair Lady. And My Fair Lady. Wow, yeah. Andrew Lloyd Webber is just in tears. Right, so yeah, in well... Tears. What, I what have happened? I hate relationship with Phantom. That's a whole other story. I absolutely despise Cats. I remember I got so excited to see Cats when I was in high school. I saved my pennies. I bought my ticket to go to Reunion Theater and see Cats in downtown Dallas. I remember at intermission looking at the person with them and be like, this, this is Cats? This is what everybody's been talking about? This is the worst thing I've ever seen. I was so PO'd that I was told that this was great. There is one good song. Listen to memory, leave. Don't look at people dressed up like cats. There is no reason to make a movie. Why did they make a movie? That's gonna haunt children's nightmares forever. Live action cats? Adults with whiskers on their faces? Like singing like the rum tum tugger? No. And started uh, who, what, what, why, who, why? Creepy. That rum tum tugger is in the trouble. And it's almost as bad as Starlight Express, which, guys, was basically roller derby <laughs> with blue light on stage, right? Starlight Express. I know Andrew Lloyd Webber's probably crying, but I'm sorry. He had a few good ones. No, Joseph of course. Joseph Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, that's a great one. Oh, Joseph really the Amazing Technicolor really Dreamcoat, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. That's how a about, good one. That's a how about, um, what was that? A Chorus Line. A chorus line. That's not Andrew Lloyd Webber. No, but it's still a, a top musical. It is great. It actually is part of why I, I, it's why I wanted to dance was watching a chorus line. Oh, really? I did. And I did one singular sensation. Yeah, you know, the whole and the truth and the ballet combo. I can probably do it all from memory. It's embarrassing. Um, I felt nothing. I can and yet it doesn't even make the list. Okay. I know. And All somehow right. this has become a musical. Um... Uh, thanks so much for playing there. Jen's top five musicals. There it is. Final topic of discussion. Here you go. Jen Piacenti. If all four major sports are played at the same time, what are you watching? You know what I'm watching, friends. I'm watching baseball. Unless. It's playoff football, then I'm watching football. I'm not watching NBA, and I'm not watching NHL. No, NHL and N N NBA, those are going to, it's playoff time. They're going to jump right into the playoffs yeah. there. So I'm not going to be excited not, to that. You know, they're fun, but if I have the option of watching a baseball game or a football game, I watch a baseball game or a football game. It's just, it's the way it is. And baseball games, I can watch baseball games. It doesn't really matter what team it is. I can watch them, but they're very long and they're very slow. So if a football game is like playoff and there's a clock going on, I'm I'm fine switching away from the baseball game to watch a, you know, a great NFL game. But if it's like Dolphins versus Bengals or whatever, and I'm like, 
and that's not that exciting. And then it's like Astros Yankees. Obviously, I'm watching Astros Yankees. Right. Well, what happens when what happens on you know mid September? Baseball, it's winding down. They're gearing up for their playoffs. So they're hoping to. And you got a big Yankees Astros series on a Sunday. And then, uh oh, what's going on? Cowboys Packers, what am I going to do? Jen? Picture in picture, baby. Come on. <laughs> I've got multiple devices. Um, I would probably. I would, watch, <laughs> I would watch Astros Yankees if it were over that because the tension is just too high. I mean, that's going to be a nail biter popcorn eater. You don't know what's going to happen. Someone could get their head taken off. I mean, the Astros Yankees, you got to watch that. Are you going to be locked into every Astros game? I mean, listen, no. I get I, I get the home t- home t- home games, they'll probably be a little bit on the safe side, but on the road, this could get like real real ugly in a creative it sort of way. It could. It could get ugly in a creative sort of way. Now, I do have to say And I do think that the Astros are benefiting from this delayed season because I think people will be so happy when baseball comes back. They'll just be a little less. I think everyone's kind of right now, we're just kind of like grateful and loving. Have you noticed everyone's a little more loving and grateful? I don't know that that will extend to the Astros. (laughs) But I think some of the, you know, real hatred, it just might temper a little bit. Um, So I think the Astros are going to benefit from that. But, yeah, there's going to be retaliation. And, yeah, I'm going to be interested because I don't want you, um, you know, hitting Jose Altuve in the face, you know? Like, so I'm going to have to keep an eye on that. I don't think anybody wants anybody to get hit in the face. I think that's, you know. I don't either, but I that's what happens when you throw at people. That can easily happen. And that's why you have to be really careful when you're already planning to hit somebody. If you're planning to lose control of the ball, you have to have really dang good control. If you're sure you can get this close to somebody or here. I mean, that's, it's just not, it's, it's scary to me what could happen. So I'm hoping that everyone, I get it. I get that there needs to be some self-policing, but it's still, let's keep it as much of a gentleman's sport as we can. Like, we're dealing with what we have to deal with. Sucks, but it is what it is. Sucks, but it is what it is. I think that's pretty much the tone of everything going on in the world right now, right? It sucks, but it is what it is. Whatever you do, guys, just don't go watch Cats, and you'll be fine. (laughs) If you watch Cats, you will have nightmares. Don't do it. Don't do it. Well, look at that. Like We got time to spare here at the tail end because Jen just said uh, the four major sports, I'm we sure. We can talk about mullet. So because oh. NHL. So here's here's my question of the day, guys. You can't get your hair cut right now. So you kind of have two options. You either buzz it or you go mullet, right? So I'm thinking at the end of this quarantine, there's going to be a lot of people that would look really cool in NHL jerseys. <laughs> all right so okay should, should i go on. get myself i got my haircut i got my i get my haircut probably like every like six months and i really? actually like just got it done right before the uh the, the whole lockdown so well very fortunate because otherwise your wife would have to do it yeah that's not happening that's not happening the bonuses of working from home and if it has to be on the live stream i'll uh Let's put a baseball cap on. No <laughs> last buzzer for Jen Piacenti. She answers all the questions within the five minutes there. She's good to go. Guys, we're going to be running a number of these. Jen's going to be hosting some. You're going to get Ronis. You're going to get Impemba. You're going to get Cells. You're going to get Hallam. You're going to get Fensty. The whole gang going to be running through these. So you got any questions you want to submit, throw out to everybody? Listen, you can follow us on Twitter, at Fantasy Alarm. Subscribe to our page on YouTube. It's just go to YouTube uh, and type in Fantasy Alarm in the uh, the subject head, in the search bar, and you can find it. You can follow us on Facebook. Go to FantasyAlarm.com on Facebook. If you've got questions that you want specific analysts to answer, we see no reason to pull any punches at this point, right? I mean, it's just... (laughs) It's open season on Fantasy Analysts. What else are we going to do? So... On that, Jen, final thoughts on the day? Watch Columbo and use Purell. 
Watch Columbo. That's my recommendation of the day. Wow. A mic drop moment right there. I'm going to say a big thank you to Matt Sells, our producer, for today's show. Big thanks to Jen Piacenti. We're glad to see her back. She's healthy. She's ready to go. Submit any questions you got our way, and we'll take care of them. For Matt Sells, Jen Piacenti, I'm Howard Bender. This is Fantasy Alarms 5 on 5. We'll catch you next time.